tonight on Walt Disney. I want you to spend time every day from now till summer's end studying your reader. Somebody. Don't cross your legs, Pollyanne. It isn't ladylike. I've hired the best tutor available to continue your schooling, and you mustn't discourage him. In England, I went to school with the other missionary children. And it puts you way behind. Pollyanna, please don't fiddle. without saying good morning. Good morning, Mrs. Tarbell. Miss Best? Good morning. We are in a bit of a hurry. You see, I'm hosting the city council for lunch, and there's a great deal to be done. Pollyanna. Hello, Mrs. Tarbell. Hello, Miss Best. Good morning, dear. Hello, Pollyanna. Oh, Miss Best, your kitten is gorgeous. Oh, thank you, dear. I call him Charles. Pollyanna. <laughs> Naughty kitty. <laughs> Oh, he's such good companionship for a lonely maiden lady. But he does like his little adventures. How is the poor child getting along now? Oh, it must be such an adjustment for her, considering her former circumstances. Poor little thing, losing both parents, coming all this way. Of course, it has improved her lot. Pollyanna is doing just fine, thank you. Now, we really must be going. <gasps> There's that woman. The widow Jen. She's my new neighbor. Get in. She's moved in about a half mile from me. Of course, she's, she's not very neighborly. Oh, I'll say not. I paid her a welcome call. She shut the door right in my face. Imagine. Oh, no disrespect, Miss Polly, but you have rented your property to a most peculiar person. We really must go. Uh, you'll excuse us, ladies, please. Oh, and if you think she was rude to me, the widow Jen, you should hear what she said to the young Reverend Tom. Thomas? Good day, ladies. Sometimes it seems that Miss Polly Harrington thinks she's much too good for the rest of us. been thus far? I paid my first official call yesterday to one of your new citizens, the widow Jen. I trust her reception was not typical of what I may expect to find here in Harrington. Oh, how is that? There I was, extending the goodwill of the parish to her, when the widow Jen flatly stated 
that she had no intention of joining the church. She then invited me off her porch. It was shocking. What? Refusing church or inviting you off her porch? Recidivism is no laughing matter, Miss Harrington. Indeed. And neither is the general moral turpitude in this community. Just what are you referring to? Already I have noticed that at the women's auxiliary meetings there is idle talk when there is work that needs to be done. The orphanage, its religious education program is a disgrace. Reverend Tull, I administrate the Harrington Orphanage and I designed its Sunday school program. Then whomever is responsible for implementing that plan does so badly. And I must say, you're quite an expert on our faults for someone who's been here less than a week. Is there a specific reason you chose to take up 30 minutes of my time this morning? Miss Harrington, you are the leading citizen of this community. It's moral example. I need your support to rescue what I perceive to be a sinking parish. My dear young man. You are here to fill in for our Reverend Ford for the space of only one month. I suggest you stick to the substantial business of Sunday services. And regarding your sermons, unfortunately the folk of Harrington have not just been through the seminary. You will never save their recidivist, turpitudinous souls unless you learn to speak plainer English. Good day. Good morning, Reverend. Pollyanna, your lunch is waiting for you down in the kitchen. After you eat, you will go straight to your room and review your reader. I will be busy with my luncheon and must not be disturbed. Yes, Aunt Polly. Fried chicken, potato salad, four apple pies. Will that be all for today, Mrs. Leveler? You may go, Cora. Teddy Forrest. Hello, everybody. Angelica, Mrs. Leveler. Good morning, dear. Oh, fine. The cream curdled, the cake fell, the toast points burned. Here comes Miss Glad. Oh, are you the orphan girl who's come to live with Polly Harrington? She's Miss Harrington's niece. Oh, hi. I'm Cora. Are you going to be walking here when they need an extra pair of hands? Nice to meet you, Miss Glad. No, no, her name is Pollyanna Harrington. Sit down and eat, dear. Pollyanna has a game she calls the Glad Game. That's why Angelica calls her Miss Glad. My father taught it to me one winter at the missionary. We were very poor and I was very discouraged. It's positively revolting. There's nothing more nerve-wracking than unnecessary cheerfulness. I like games. How does the Glad Game go? Well, it's very simple, really. First, there has to be something wrong. That's easy enough around here. And just when things are so bad, you think you can't bear it any longer, you make yourself think of something to be glad about. Oh, that sounds nice. I like that. For example, while the toast points burned and the cream curdled and the cake fell, Angelica can be glad the sauce didn't separate. The sauce. The whole of the sauce. Did it? No, it didn't. Well, there then. Aren't you glad? <laughs> <laughs> his lessons promptly. Jack plays mumbled his paint behind the teacher's back and fails to pay attention. Ted is building character. Shh. Pollyanna! Jimmy Bean! What are you doing here? Want to join our club? What club? Oh, I haven't given it a name yet. But we found a real fine clubhouse. I can't. I have to study. How come? It's still summer. 
Aunt Polly wants me to be prepared for my new tutor. That stinks. I know. Come on, we need another member. How many do you have? Me and Mary Lee. She's from the orphanage, too. I hope you know the first three lessons. But if Aunt Polly found out, she won't. Come on, down the tree. Come on, let's go. Oh, Jimmy Bean says you're an orphan, too. How can we live with Miss Polly Harrington? I lived in an orphanage in England after my parents were killed. But then Aunt Polly kindly agreed to have me come here to live with her. Oh. Well, one time I was almost adopted. By a very rich man. He was much richer than your Aunt Polly. And he owned a castle. In Chicago. I didn't know they had castles in Chicago. Well, he developed a horrible condition. And wound up as crippled as a stump. So he couldn't adopt me after all. That's too bad. Stop making up those stories, Marilee. Come on, this way. Another time I was almost adopted by a couple. What a dear little cottage in the woods. A fireplace and a white cat. What happened? Well, the cottage went down to the ground in a terrible storm. And they perished, including the cat. My goodness. Well, that's a shame. All right, Ben. Let's get to work. Here's a good one. We need two or three more, just like that. Whose house is that? I don't know. Come on, get some more wood. Not that one. It's got a nail in it. That's the widow Jen. Yeah. 
having an occasional need for that sort of girl, son. But we're respectable people. Cora, she dragged me out of there, didn't she? Oh, I thanked her for that amply. Now I want your word you'll have nothing more to do with her. Do we understand each other? Dr. Chilton and Miss Harrington are here. Show them in, Mother. And you're not to mention having been with her to anyone. Not even your mother. Especially not your mother. Doctor, Miss Harrington. Good evening. Herman, thank you for coming. Oh. Well, Johnny, what happened to you? I don't know. I took a swim. With all your clothes on? Open up. See, huh? Ah. Uh, Again. Ah. Uh, Anything hurt? My chest when I breathe. My head. Your head? Did you hit your head? Yeah, I must have. Where'd you get those scratches? Johnny? Scratches? I don't remember. Well, I have good news for you. You're going to live. I'd like to keep him in bed for a couple of days. I don't want him to contract pneumonia. Just give him plenty of hot soup and large doses of attention. Thank you, Dr. Chilton. Sure. I understand you bought a piece of land out of Falmouth Road. I did. Sounds like a solid investment to me if you get on my opinion. Of course I would. Like some what do you want? Make me feel better. Yeah. Thanks. John is all right, Mrs. Muller. I feel some responsibility since I do own that property out there. Not at all. He shouldn't have been there without your permission. He was trespassing. And when he's better, he'll deliver you a formal apology in person. Miss Harrington, tell me something. The woman who lives there now, the widow Jen, I've heard such strange things. Mother, why don't we offer the doctor, Miss Harrington, a cup of tea? No, thank you. It's way past Pollyanna's bedtime. What happened? Did he suffer a cramp? Well, he may have, or possibly dove in and hit his head, but I found no contusion. I don't know how he got those scratches on his face, either. But I'll tell you what I think had more to do with the incident than anything. Spirits. Thank you. So is Johnny Muller going to be all right? Perfectly. So why don't you put all those worries out of your pretty head and go to sleep? Well, Aunt Polly come up and tuck me in, too. Your mother and father used to tuck you in, hmm? Yes. Mom kissed me, and then father would sit just where you are now, and we'd talk. Lots of days things hadn't gone awfully well for us, but he'd always find the bright spots. And I'd go off to sleep feeling luckier than a princess. Pollyanna. Your Aunt Polly has, as you may have noticed, uh, a little problem with things like hugs and goodnight kisses. I've been working on her about it for years without much success. And, well, until you came here. Me? Yeah. In the few weeks since you came, there's been... Quite a change in Polly Harrington. She smiles more, she laughs. She tries not to show it, but I catch her when she doesn't know I'm watching. The other day, I caught her humming to herself. Now, she may not be quite up to hugs and kisses, but she'll get there. I'm certain of it. If we work on her together. What do you say? <laughs> Ooh, give her that one for me. 
nothing for the good doctor? Nothing? <laughs> Tuck up. Now, don't forget to say your prayers. I won't. And I always remember you in my prayers. Oh, except when I fall asleep before I get to you. Night. Good night, Polly. House. You go get some wood for the keep out sign. Okay, come on. Oh, you know what happened to Johnny Muller? Mr. Muller, the banker's son, yesterday, after we saw him and Cora on the pond. What? He nearly drowned. Oh, he did not. You're making that up. I went to his house with my Aunt Polly and Dr. Chilton. You really did? Well, what's it like? I've heard they have jars of money all over the place. <laughs> Dr. Chilton told Aunt Polly Johnny's nearly drowning had something to do with spirits. You mean like ghosts? I guess so, but I don't believe in ghosts. I do. I've seen them. Now you're making things up. I am? Am I? Well, for your information, Miss Pollyanna Harrington, I've seen a ghost right near here. Where? There. Widow Jens, before you joined the club, came out the back door, floated down the steps, and then across the yard. And then it disappeared around the side of the barn. You know, I bet it was the Widow Jens' husband. He probably came back to spy on her. He probably tried to drown Johnny Muller because he was jealous. Johnny Muller likes Cora. Widow Jens old enough to be his mother. I know, but ghosts don't think like that. When they get mad, they just attack. There it is! What? In the window. Didn't you see it? It was probably just the Widow Jen. Uh-uh. She's off the town. Look, a horse and wagon are gone. What's that? It moved! <laughs> oh! So lonesome, please come back. else to turn. Unfortunately, Polly Harrington holds herself above the urgent concerns of us ordinary people of Harrington. And although we here hardly know you yet, I can see that you care. Sit down, ladies, please. Now, tell me what concerns you. It's about the newcomer to this town, the Widow Jen. You've only been here a short while. I've lived here all my life. Strange things are happening, Reverend. Something is very wrong. She told me what the cat looked like when Luella Best found him dead as a doornail. His hair was standing on end, and, and his eyes was bulging way out to here and he was nailed to the Widow Jen's front door. You mean an animal sacrifice? Witchcraft right here in Harrington? I guess that's what that means. You mean we have witchcraft right here in Harrington? 
all that is pure nonsense. I don't know what happened to that fool cat, but I know pretty well what happened to young Johnny Muller. That widow is no spiritualist. She's one of them ill repute ladies. You mark my words. He drug himself up on the bank, and when they found him, there were bite marks on his neck. It's clear as rainwater, the same thing got the cat, got Johnny. Matella, are you on the line? I'm here, Horner. But what have you heard? Let me tell you this, I've heard some doozies. People are saying some thing or somebody tried to drown me out there. Oh, that's as good an explanation as any other. But it isn't true. What does that have to do with it? Let people think what they want to think. You'll be going back to school in three weeks. I have to live in this community. Appearances. That's all you care about, isn't it? Did you make up the guest bedroom, Angelica? I made up the guest bedroom. Did you remember to polish my dresser top? I polished it. Yes or no will be sufficient, Angelica. Did you neaten up the third floor linen closet? May I speak to Miss Harrington, please? I'll see if she's taking callers. Thank you, Angelica. Johnny, you're looking well. Come in. I've come to offer you my apology. Why don't we step into the parlor, Johnny, where we can speak privately? Oh, I love fresh peas, don't you? Pollyanna, you didn't mention to anyone about me and Johnny Muller at the pond, did you? Oh, no. I wouldn't. You see, the Mullers don't want folks to know I was with them on account of I'm too common for them. That's dumb. Do they know how nice you are? Well, folks like them don't want to know nothing about the likes of me. Cora! Johnny! I was going to give this to your father, but you can take it for me. He gave me this the night of the accident. Please tell your father thank you, but I've no use for his money. Listen, Cora, I'm sorry. My father's just like that. But I'm not like my father. We can still see each other. We just won't go to the pond. We'll find some place else. You just don't understand, do you? Cora? Cora? We swear allegiance to this club not to tell a living soul. Whoever breaks this vow, may the boogeyman get them. I swear. I think spirits had more to do with it than anything. But I don't believe in ghosts. I do. I've seen them. Jimmy Bean, what are you doing here? Come on, we're going to pick president of our club. Now? Yeah, it's Mary Lee's idea. Each one of us has to go slowly around the widow's house. Whoever doesn't get scared, he can't run, is president for life. President for life? Jimmy Bean will go first. That way he can sneak back to the orphanage, complain about his stomachache. See, they do the boys' dormitory first. And if he can stall them, I can get back in before they find out I'm missing. <laughs> okay, the rules are you have to walk slowly all the way around the house and come back here. If you run, you're disqualified. All right, Jimmy, go ahead. Good luck.
What did he sound like? What did a ghost sound like? I just walked on by. You didn't cheat and run, did you? No, I didn't cheat and run. What's it you doing? I'm doing it last. How come? You scared? Well, it was my idea, wasn't it? So I can do it whenever I want. And you better get back before you miss bed check. Hurry up. Go on. Okay. Don't forget, I did first. Pollyanna, it's your turn. either. He didn't touch you. He didn't lay a finger on you. And don't you tell anyone he did. You hear me? He's not dangerous. No, he's not. He's just simple. <gasps> Make it straight and neat. Dr. Chilton? Mm hmm What does it mean if a person's simple? Simple. Well, there's no easy answer to that question. Simple people are slower to learn, slower to learn some things than the rest of us are. Are they bad? Bad? Some people say that they're possessed, but I don't believe that at all. Every simple-minded person that I've met in my practice has been just a person. Do simple-minded people have souls? Every living thing has a soul, Pollyanna, and deserves to be treated accordingly. Don't you agree? Yes, I do. Are we ready? Oh, Polly, you look gorgeous. Why, thank you, Pollyanna. So do you. Shall we go? Nothing more fortifying than a nice, long sermon, Reverend. Thank you. Oh, wonderful. Your mother must be so proud. <laughs> Just lovely. But we all certainly agree with you about turpitude. Thank you very much. Now, while I still have you all together, there's just one more thing I must bring to your attention. This week, our town has been rife with rumor and innuendo. This morning, I intend to staunch the flow of suspicion by telling you the truth. Prompted 
prompted by one of your citizens, I made inquiries with a good friend of mine in Springfield. This is what I discovered. The widow Jet is not a widow. Her husband left her because she bore him a monster, so, twisted in mind and body. The widow Jen and her monster son lived in Springfield until three months ago when the citizens of that community forced her to leave because she refused to have him committed to an asylum where he belongs. <laughs> he had attacked an innocent little girl. And now, it's happened again. Here! In Harrington. This. This. Fine or. She was accosted by the widow Jen's son in the woods last. Night! That's what happened to my Johnny. I know it. Scared him so bad he can't stand to hear talk of it. What's this all about? Well, the vet checked the girls first last night, and Mary Lee got caught sneaking back in. Mary Lee wouldn't snitch on me or you, so she told the grown-ups a made-up story how the guy attacked her. Guess she gets present for life, all right. How come? Oh, she told me the real story, how she held him up so he could run away. What? When he attacked you. That's braver than just going out of his house. She did not. Mary Lee did no such thing. But he didn't attack me. He didn't so much as say boo. Barely said you'd say that because you want to be president for life yourself. I don't even want to be a member of this club that's going to be full of liars and dumbbells. Who's a liar? Not you. Oh, you're a dumbbell. Come on, I'll show you. The Widow Jen's boy isn't a monster or a ghost. He's a harmless person. Oh, no, no thanks. I'll just stay right here and live. <sighs> Not you again. You're always everywhere. Don't you ever stay home? Did he really attack you? I don't know what you're talking about. Go away. He's simple-minded, but he doesn't seem mean. Well, he is mean, and he did attack me. And I guess if he did that, you have a reason for hurting him back. You are hurting him. All right. I say we do something! Wait, 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 listen. Let's think this out. You're partial to Miss Polly Harrington's point of view. And her point of view has a long way to go down her nose to see the rest of us. Nobody is going to do anything until I have ascertained there is a danger. Well, I sure hope there isn't any. Polly Ann has gone to the Widow Jen's right now. Oh, my God. And while Miss Harrington is waiting to ascertain, the same thing is happening all over again to her very own niece. All right, let's go! <laughs> Sorry for the 
things we thought and the way we behaved. I'm new here too. It takes people a while here to accept somebody new. I've noticed. But when they do, they can be quite nice. Well, a lot of them, actually, once you get to know them. You fixed Charles's leg, didn't you? That was awfully nice. I bet Miss Bess will appreciate it. She ought to, anyway. What's your name? Tom. Thomas Edward Jin. He knows his name, just not how to say it. What's that? Tom! Wait! My Aunt Polly won't let them harm him. She won't, I promise. Give them a chance to understand about him. Right there, hold on, stop, right there. Uh, uh, whatever's going on here, an angry mob isn't going to help it. Pollyanna, Pollyanna. Aunt Polly, I'm here. Here I am. There he is. Get him. Now, hold on. I don't take orders from the doctor unless I'm sick. <laughs> I will take legal action against any man, woman, or child who sets one foot on my property. She's protecting a monster. You're harboring a criminal. Holly, wait. Everybody, this is a newcomer to our town. He's called Tom. He found Miss Beth's kitten with an injured leg, and he mended it. Oh, oh Charles! Oh, I suppose he did mend it. How do we know he didn't break the little critter's leg in the first place? Apparently, is that the man who attacked you last night? Well, I, I think so. Merrily, please tell the truth. Yeah, Merrily, tell the truth. He didn't attack you. He didn't attack me either. I have no reason to hurt him by letting folks think he did. Nobody attacked me. And I didn't hit my head or get a cramp. I had too much to drink, and I was showing off. <laughs> but the only thing I'm not ashamed of is who I was showing off for. Cora Spencer. Oh. And me and Marilee snuck out last night to do an act of bravery. It was part of belonging to our secret club. On the way home, we met up with Tom Jen. He didn't do anything but scare us. And he didn't mean to do that. He sometimes goes out for a walk at night because I won't let him out in the daylight for fear of being seen. My son wouldn't hurt a fly. Matter of fact, most folks could learn a lot about kindness from him. Well... There's your monster. Here's your lady of ill repute. What do you want to do with them? Let me run them out of town? String them up? club next summer. Mary Lee says she might like boys next summer. And I don't think I'm gonna like girls. Who is Mary Lee? Do and Penton's. 
She has to do pant with every meal till Christmas. That's her punishment for telling those lies about the widow's boy. Pollyanna, your new tutor is coming up the drive this very minute. Quick, brush your hair and come down. Yes, Aunt Putty. Isn't my tutor the same one who's going to be your new teacher at the orphanage? Uh-huh. Is that him? Ugh. Seen your new tutor? Find something to be glad about in that. it's autumn again and time for lessons because after autumn it's winter and time for more lessons and after that it's spring and time for more lessons but after that it's summer again and no more lessons isn't that something to be glad about <laughs> 